Hey guys, I've received several comments over the past uh, few months and year or two about how do I do electrolysis on my iron relics to clean them. So I'm going to make this short little video to show you how I use uh, electrolysis to clean things. So let's take a look at this. We're going to we're going to clean this guy today. This is a iron spike that I dug up uh, recently. Kind of a little bit weird looking. Uh, somebody commented on one of my videos and said it's a tent spike. And they found one just like it in a Confederate camp. And incidentally, I found this in a Confederate camp. So it certainly could be that tent, tent uh, spike. Uh, you can see how really crusty it is. I mean, that is like covered in rust and corrosion, etc. The first thing you need before you clean any iron object in electrolysis is a good contact on the base metal. Now, something like this, it's kind of hard to get because there's no... Um, area where it would be easy to drill a little hole or something like that. So what I do is I use my bench grinder to make uh, to get down to the base metal in a small spot that'll attach the wire to. So I'm going to do that and then I'll, I'll show it to you. Okay now if this was something I was super concerned about like a shell or I don't know something I really didn't want to damage I probably wouldn't do that but for this it's fine. Uh, you can see I made a little uh, Took a little bit of the uh, rust over there to, off the top to get to the base metal. That's what I'm going to attach the wire to. I'll show you the setup and how it's going to be connected. Okay, now we're ready to take a look at the electrolysis tank and how it's set up so you guys can get an idea of how to do this if you'd like to do it on your own. Okay, we have a tub of water here and in the water is uh, just some baking soda, regular plain old baking soda that I have mixed in there. I don't use a ton some other guys I know use uh, like um, dish soap, like uh, the powdered dish soap, I don't know, Cascade or something like that. I know a guy who uses that. There's other things you can use. I like using baking soda. I have a power supply here, which I got off of Amazon. I'll put um, a link to exactly the... I'll put a link to this exact product in the comments so you can take a look at that one. This works well for me. This is kind of a low, um, a low amperage one, two and a half amps, uh, was a three amp surge, 13.8 volts DC. So this is this is not like one of those power supplies that's gonna really do it fast, but I like doing electrolysis slow. I think that's the safest way to clean iron relics. So we have the we have the positive which is connected to a copper wire connected to a stainless steel fork. I use stainless steel knives, spoons, and forks that I find in the river as the electrode. So, but you can really use, use a bunch of different things as, as, as the electrode where the positive is connected to. We have the negative wire here. The negative is connected to a copper wire that is connected to the iron relic that we're going to be cleaning through the electrolysis. Now remember, I, I made that contact on the spike using my bench grinder where there's just the, the base metal there. You have to have the wire connected to the base metal. If it's just on the rust, it's not going to get a good contact and it's not going to work. Now, if this is hooked up correctly, when I turn this on, we should see uh, bubbles start to appear from the object itself, not just from the two wires. So let's turn it on and see. All right, the moment of truth. Okay, so I don't know if you can see that, but we're getting bubbles coming up from the spike itself. You see that? You can kind of see the uh, the bubbles coming up from the spike. That means that there's a good contact and electrolysis is ongoing. We're going to leave that in there for a day or two, and we're going to see if it uh, if it cleans up. Now, what should happen is the rust should gradually fall off of that iron object as the bubbles form on the surface of the base iron, and that should force the corrosion and rust to kind of fall off. So I'm going to, uh, we'll check in in a day or two and uh, you, you'll see what it looks like. Okay, so this is day two and as you can kind of see the uh, iron object has, the electrolysis has really had an effect on the iron uh, spike there. A lot of the rust has fallen off and corrosion, so we're going to take it out of the water and see what it looks like. But um, I think that's going to turn out pretty nice. All right, so just picking it up out of the uh, water, a lot of the corrosion fell off. You can see it just kind of flakes off there. Yeah, that's turned out. That's turned out pretty nice. Down to that uh, base iron there. 
got that nice black color that you get in, the, in electrolysis. There's a dark color on the iron. Okay. Let's, uh, we're going to just clean that up a little bit and, uh, and uh, rinse that off. You can see on my hands how that stuff re really makes a mess. It can stain your hands uh, as well. Um, so let's, uh, so let me rinse that off and then I'll show you the next step. Okay, now for our next step of the process, I have Gempler's Rust Converter here. This stuff works really, really well. I much prefer using Gempler's over wax, uh, paraffin wax, or other types of wax. To me, the Gempler's works a lot better, really preserves the iron very nicely, but it's expensive. It's like 60 or 80 bucks for a gallon of that, so that's expensive. Okay, so what we're gonna do is we're gonna take this spike here and we're gonna use a paintbrush to kind of coat it in the, in the Gempler's. All right, so we're going to take the, paint, the uh, paintbrush here, coat it in the Gemplers, and then we're going to coat the spike. You don't want to get too much of this on your hand. Um, it'll make your hand uh, stain nice and purple, kind of like ink. <laughs> it's hard to get off. It takes a couple days for it to get off. Want to get a nice coating in there. All right. And then just kind of prop the object up on something like this iron piece here and let it dry. It's purple now, but it's going to dry to a really nice dark color. And then it'll be it'll be done. So uh, I'll let you see what it looks like when it's finished. And look how that came out. Isn't that nice? I mean, that came out beautiful to me. Um, really, really nice iron relic preserved so that's not going to rust again now that has a rust converter on it and that's going to be just a nice addition to to my collection um, like i mentioned found that in a civil war camp confederate camp and that's uh that's that's really cool to me so i hope you enjoyed this explanation video on electrolysis and how i do it and if you guys have any more questions you can put them in the comments and uh, i wish you all luck on cleaning and preserving your iron relics that that you find metal detecting or or elsewhere all right, see you guys on the next adventure.